Hey everyone, it's me, Sarah. And it's me, Rocky. And today, we have a special treat for you. Wait. Wait. And we're Savage Disney Pins. Oh, that too. <laughs> and today we have um, a little bit, no. We have a special treat for you, Sarah. And today we have a special treat for you. Indeed we do. See the stuff on the wall behind me here? Well, that's just one of the many methods of pin exposition that Sarah is going to show you how <laughs> she shows off her pins. Whether it be in the house, on the wall, stacked in a corner of the floor in no, several piles. No. She collects a lot of pins. <laughs> or in the park. There's a lot of ways to display pins at home and lots of people have different ways to do it. And I just wanted to take a few minutes and show you how I collect and display my pins. Now this is not a definitive resource guide for how to display pins. This not is at all. always an evolving method. We'll see something on Instagram or somewhere else, or Sarah will see something at Ikea and get an idea, and I now have to hang stuff on the wall. I think we should start at kind of the beginning of our evolution of pin displaying. The most common way that I see people displaying pins is on cork boards. And you can see I've got some cork boards behind us here on the wall, and we have them throughout the rest of the house. Um, the cork boards that I get tend to be kind of a harder cork and also a little bit shallow. So I actually like to put a foam sheet on top of the cork and then push the pins in. So here's an example of one of, one of my boards. <laughs> <laughs> What's really nice about doing it with this foam core, is that what that is? Just foam? It's not foam core, it's, it's, foam. Just, it's just like 5 8 millimeter kids craft foam. What's nice about it is it allows more contrast when you do a dark background so the pins stick out so you can see the pins. Um, not everybody appreciates the aesthetic value of bare cork. It's also really a busy pattern so like you lose some of the, the pin when you put it on such a busy pattern. I've seen other people do this as well and they use foam in different colors. Like you can buy packs of this, these sheets of foam in a whole rainbow of colors and people will do colors that like fit kind of with the character or, or things like that. So um, I tend to like to just do the black because I think it makes the pins pop a little bit more like Rocky was just saying. Um, so most of mine all have the black background. Now there are your traditional cork boards, but there are a whole variety of cork-based products out there in the world that you can display pins on. Yeah, oh yeah. So this is from Ikea. It's this nice little round. It's actually a trivet. So we have a few of these in our kitchen that we use as trivets, but the rest of them are on our walls. <laughs> um, they're nice, they're, they're soft cork, so you're not gonna damage any of your pin backs or anything like that. They're nice and thick too, so the pins don't poke all the way through. Exactly, they're really thick, so the backing of the pin doesn't go through the back. So you just pop the pin in and it stays just like that. And then what I like to do is I just take a nail, I put this where I want on the wall, and I put a nail in and I just hammer the nail in, and then I just take one of the pins and cover up the little top of the nail so you don't even see it, so it looks like they're just floating on the wall. Other things that you can do if you are not keen to putting a nail through it is you can attach them to a ribbon on the back by simple glue and secure the ribbon to the wall. That way you can put a bunch in a straight line if you want to. Yeah, there's there's tons of different ways that you could display these. Um, I've also seen people put them um, in one of those plate holder display holders um, up in their like on their bookshelf. We have these everywhere. <laughs> yeah, so I do really like these. I have a ton of these. I like to put, um, when I finish like a mystery box set or something like that, I'll, I'll put them on here. Good call, good call. Most major stores carry some sort of cork product, so they come in all kinds of sizes. Target has these cool hexagon ones and square ones that are already painted black, so you don't have to go through the process of putting foam on it. Um, Michael's, Joann's, Ikea, your local craft store will have something, or even like Office Depot and things like that all mm -hmm. carry different kinds of cork boards. There are a select few in the pin community who are artistically gifted 
and go a step beyond. Like Sarah received this pen board, which is just cork board, but someone painted Agraba on it. And Sarah has a nice little collection of Aladdin based pens. I wish I had the artistic skill to make something like this because it takes your pen collection and it makes it really thematic and it's just, it's almost distracting because you're looking at how good the picture is. Yeah, so this is kind of the opposite of the like neutral black background. Yeah, but it's nice because <laughs> like you put your pins all in the sky, which has a lot less going on than down here below. Yeah. How did you get this? Uh, this was actually gifted. To, I'm not sure who painted it, but it was gifted to me by um, one of my friends on Instagram that I met in the pin community, Mariella at the Parks Palette. Check them out on Instagram. Um, they also have a YouTube channel. I will link them down below. Speaking of linking down below, in the comments section, if you have done something artistic like this to display your pins. Ooh, I wanna know. Yeah, link it to us. Put it on image or send us a Facebook link. Whatever, we wanna see how you're doing it because. I'm always looking for new ways yeah, to. Yeah, we'll, we will kindly rip off your ideas for display in our <laughs> home. <laughs> so aside from cork boards, I have a few other methods of hanging pins. Yeah, so we went from corkboard, and then the next idea we saw was a canvas-based one. Fabric. Fabric-based. We started with corkboard, and then the next idea that I believe you saw on Instagram? I think so. Yeah, is a fabric-based one, and very simple to do, but super effective mm -hmm. in displaying pins. Yeah. And easy. Yeah. So I took an embroidery hoop from the craft store and just hot glued some fabric in it and then trimmed around the back. It's a great way to like hook and hang pins. It's okay to do more than one pin, like not a crazy person too. There's two pins in here. Yeah, well this one's amazing and it's cool that you have one, maybe two of these, but you just had to get this into this video, didn't you? Help me fill my board. I have space for more Space Mountain. And then you'll be done? Yes. I picked a navy blue fabric for this one because it was kind of like dark night sky-ish. But the cool thing about this is that you can really kind of do whatever you want with it. I actually have this fabric here as one of them as well. And I put some of my Epcot pins in there because it kind of looks like Spaceship Earth. And then the most recent one I have, I put on this bright green color because I thought that it made the blue of the new 65th anniversary pins really pop. So you can really kind of do whatever you want. The backs of these are not very pretty, but it doesn't really matter because that's not what you see. You just see this. And then I just put a little nail. I've also seen people put like a piece of ribbon or try and cover this piece up a little bit and then hang it from the ribbon. Again, this is not the end all be all of how to display pins. I just wanted to show everybody kind of what I like to do. And to me, I don't need the piece of ribbon because I want the, the pins to be shown off. Yeah, it's really nice because it allows you to customize easily the fabric choice based on the pin collection. Like you could do a dark purple for a haunted <clears throat> mansion board, mm -hmm. or you could do like a flannel if you're doing something with, you know, Critter Country or something. You, who knows? <laughs> or Frontierland, yeah. yeah. And sometimes, You'll just be walking through a store and you'll get struck by inspiration as Sarah did. Uh, like this Captain America foam shield that was like in the dollar <laughs> section of Target. It has little armbands on the back. It's for like a little kid's like Halloween costume, but I think it was like a dollar at Target. It was in like the bin section at the front. This is my son's. He only has the uh, Loungefly Avengers. He has a lot of Avengers pins, but he's particularly proud of this one right here. Sarah just got it for him and it's, uh, uh, he doesn't wanna, wanna clutter it up because he likes the display. But if you see something like this in the store, you know what? Have at it. It's a uh, it's fair game. I think this looks really cool. <laughs> so there's lots of ways to display pins at home, and, and we're going to get back to that in just a second. But I wanted to jump over to this really quick and talk about how I carry pins with me in the park. It definitely depends. Depends on which park we're going to. Um, if we're going to Disneyland on a Thursday or a Sunday, I usually bring like my big binder with me because those are big trading days and a lot of other big traders come to Disneyland on those days. I'm not super familiar with the trading schedule in Disney World, so I'm not super familiar with it just because we haven't been there that much and we don't plan our trips around the pin trading there, kind of more like we do in Disneyland. 
But all that being said, I do carry around this crack and trade clamshell backpack and it has this really nice window display on the front so you can put some pins in here. I generally, these are a few of my traders that I just kind of plugged into the, the backpack really quickly for the video, but I generally will have my display like keeper pins. So I'll put like my aerial tattoo princess in here and, and things like that as a display. The, this comes out and it's a nice, thick, sturdy cork board. This is also what their pin books have in them. So you can get sheets of this stuff for binders and things like that, which is really nice. It's a really dense material, so it doesn't wear with the constant poking and unpoking of pins. Yeah, exactly. Like, like cork does, or if you use a standard foam. I try to make some sheets for her notebooks and they don't last nearly They're as long. They're not great, yeah. I usually have a second one of these that I put in with my traders. It's a really nice bag and they've actually, this is kind of like the first gen bag. They've now come out with another one. The one issue I had with this bag is that it didn't have like a little handle right here and their second gen bags do. So that's really nice. It also doubles as her purse frequently, like in the real world. Yeah, so you can do, it has backpack straps or you can make it so that it's like one long yeah, it's got strap some hanger things right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is what I carry around in the park with me. And there are, if this isn't your jam, there are lots of alternatives. Go out to Etsy. I mean, there's like folio style zip up pins that have really good material in them. There's a whole whole, whole world of, of ways to carry your pins in the park. Yeah, yeah. I definitely like this because I can keep my my cell phone, my traders, my, you know, all the stuff that I need, my little like medicine bag that I keep with me. You know, all that stuff. When I'm not carrying around my fanny pack, which you can see how I pack that in, dang it, every time. When I'm not carrying that around with me, I'm generally carrying this around. This, this scale too, like I've seen people wear ones that are like full on backpacks with big display windows too. So. Yeah, Kraken has a lot of, we'll link them down below too, but um, they have a, a ton of different um, pin bags. <laughs> Coffee. Back to displaying in the home on the wall. If you really want to step up your game, which Sarah has tried to make these look as artsy as possible, is deploying fancy shadow deploying. box. <laughs> look at this thing. This is gorgeous, right? It's got a nice thick shadow box with a hinge lid so she can interact with the pins. What she uses in the back of this is actually the like foam matting that they put on the floors for like garages. You can get it at a at a hardware store, but they come in these giant like two by two sheets, I believe. Mm -hmm. And she just cuts them to fit the back. They're nice and thick, the pins go in. She does a good job when putting these on display by giving them enough room like you would in a museum so you can really each, see each pin without it being super cluttered and distracting. What's also nice is I've seen other folks actually take LED strips and put them in the top. So when they hang these on the walls, it illuminates their pins, which I think I just gave Sarah an idea that I'm gonna have to make happen. That's your fault. I know, but I saw it online and it looked really cool. <laughs> this is my favorite way Sarah displays pins on the wall, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So here's one that's being worked on. It's a work in progress. This is the Cruiser series that's been coming out in 2020. So eventually this will be full as well. These frames, guess where they're from? Uh, Ikea? Ikea. They're only $15. They're super duper sturdy, so you can hang it this way. Landscape or, or portrait style, yeah. Hot dog or hamburger. So I really like that you can open these from the front. Um, a lot of shadow boxes you have to kind of like take off the back like you would a picture frame. And they're really hard to kind of manipulate where you want your pins to be. I really, really like this. We hang them on the wall, put them where we want them on the wall, and then I can kind of mess with the pins once they're in place. And there's a nice, like, strong magnet on there too. So even if you hang it the other way, this isn't gonna like flap open. If you're in the trading game, not all pins will stay with you long enough to go on the wall. They're not gonna make a cozy place there. They're not gonna have their own toothbrush in the house, if you know what I mean. So a quick way to display that so you can sort through them are binders. This is not necessarily all Sarah's traders. She also puts collections in here for long-term storage that don't necessarily merit display, but she pulls them out quite frequently and it makes it easy to organize where 
what is. So do you want to see my trading binder first or do you want to see one of my collection binders? Let's take a look at your trading binder first okay. and then pull up that collecting binder. Y'all, this is most of my traders. It's most of the real estate in our house. I'm glad you picked the trading binder first because it, it kind of encompasses a lot of different ways that I store pins. As you can see, this is a giant, ooh, this is a giant binder. Because it has the inserts on the front and the sides, the back, it makes it easy to organize if you wanted to label what they were so you could just look where you have them shelved and see what's in there. Not that we're organized people. Okay, some of my binders have labels, but not okay. all of them because I like to play with my pins. So I'm constantly reorganizing them and changing things up and, and things like that. So I went through and I labeled all of my binders a couple months ago thinking that like, yes, Perfect. I'm gonna be able to just like have a pin that I get in a trade and know exactly where it belongs. No, then I reorganized everything and didn't change any of the labels and now I have to still pull down every binder that I have, which I'm not I'm not complaining about it. Yeah, first world problems if I've ever heard about. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> I don't mind. So the first thing I have in here are these little kind of like sheet protectors. They're the size of like the baseball card holders that you can get um, or like business card holders or whatever. Um, these are really nice. I like these. They, um, you don't have to pop through the back. The pins fit in nicely. And then they also have this snap top on them so they don't come flying out. Although a few of mine are too big, but they're pretty snug in there, so they're not gonna go anywhere. What's also nice is they have metal grommets on the eyelet so the plastic doesn't tear. Yeah, this plastic is really, really thick. It's, it's really nice. Again, this is from, uh, this is another product from Kraken, um, and they sell these sheets, I think in like three packs. They also have a couple different sizes. So I also have this size as well, which is just a four pin, and you can actually fit two pins in each so back to back which i really really like perfect for storing those mini jumbos guess what another kraken product so these are binder inserts they're made out of the same super dense foam that the clamshell insert was made out of um, and these have the metal grommets on them and literally like there's these things are amazing this was not meant to be a review video, but it's turning into one. Um, but yeah, like I, whoop, my dangles. I love these pages a lot. Yeah, Sarah's gone through several different competitive products. As I mentioned, my homemade ones, some other brands, and this has been her favorite. She's been the most happy and they seem to be, they seem to have the longest longevity or the longest lifespan when it comes to storing pins, pulling them off and on. Yeah, yeah. At first I was actually worried about like sometimes my pins get so stuck because it's such a strong foam that I've like broken a nail. The other thing I make sure to do because this is um, just like a regular binder, there's no protective sheeting. So I actually make sure to put um, these little like plastic sheets, just pop some holes in them, put them in between your layers of pins and that way they don't rub on each other. Yeah, the thicker the better. If we look at this, this isn't just a flimsy plastic piece. It's pretty. Pretty, stout. pretty sturdy. So it keeps the pins from scratching each other. Yeah. Now the binders that Sarah uses, I believe are three inch or four inch binders. Um, I have like five and six inch binders. Oh, five and six inch binders. So that was my trading binder. At least everything that can go in a binder. I have some box sets and things like that that I store differently in like a drawer. Um, couldn't bring the whole drawer out to show you, but it's you a drawer. You all can figure know it out. what a drawer looks like, I assume. This is one of the ones that I labeled that now means nothing. <laughs> There's nothing on this label that's actually in this binder. So this is one of my keeper binders. In this one, I've just used the regular like baseball card. Yeah, trading card inserts. Trading just... card inserts. Yeah, that's what they're called. They work pretty, pretty well. I think these uh, are the ultra pro ones I got for like $10 for a 25 pack at Target, I believe, but they sell them everywhere, hobby stores, game stores. I do like the extra thick ones, the Ultra Pro, Ultra Pro extra thick ones, because they don't have the like flap over like the Kraken ones do. I actually pop my back through 
and put the Mickey back on the outside so that there's no way that they're gonna go anywhere. The ones that I've shown you um, just now have all been 12 month sets and there's only nine slots in each of these. So, I mean, they don't all fit on one sheet, but I keep them together as best as I can. The last method that I use for storing my pins is also in another binder. This is another, I think, five or six inch binder. In this one, I actually take a full size sheet protector and a piece of that same craft foam that I use on the cork boards. And I put my completed sets in here. I mean, like this is a whole page of completed hidden Mickeys. So this is actually where the extra whole rainbow of colors from the foam pack come in handy because I'll use it for this. I, I try, I know the first page I showed you was the black foam, but I try and reserve the black foam for the boards. And then I use all the colored pages because they're just living in a binder. A lot of people have different ways of displaying their pins. Some people hang them all on lanyards when they get home. Some people wear the lanyards in the park. Some people get a jean jacket and make a suit of armor to display all their pins, which is a whole next level of pin training. I know, that kudos, it, kudos to them, because that is heavy. Yeah, it's also pretty impressive when you see somebody with like covered in grail pins. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, I hope that this was helpful. Maybe you got some ideas of how to display some of your pins at home. Remember, some cork boards are soft, some are hard. Test it first on like a pin that you aren't fully in love with, just in case the pin back bends a little bit. I hope we've caused some pinspiration. Either that's inspiration or perspiration, pen based though. Like you're sweating to try to get a merch pass for a release on Disney Shop, uh, Shop Disney. Oh man. Or you've been inspired to display your pins in a new way that, hey, that would be perfect for my space. We hope this has been useful. We didn't even talk about my bathroom pins. Your bathroom pins? I've already shown these in a video. I think they were in a pin tag video, but I'm gonna show it again. One last thing, this was on cork. Um, but I took a piece of cork, framed it. So here's another way to display a full collection. This is the bathroom hidden Mickey collection that came out a couple years ago. And then also the um, Jessica Rabbit and Roger Rabbit here are actually from a different set, but they all fit into the bathroom pin. So bathroom pin display. Thank you everyone for watching. Really hope you got some good ideas from this. We appreciate everybody being here. If you enjoyed this video, Click that like button down below. And for more content, hit subscribe. Until next time, stay savage, everybody. Bye. Bye. <laughs> hey, every...